This was their burial ground. Big Mac Indians. I brought you here to bury Ellen's cat. The ground beyond his soul. So I recently gave a review of the teaser trailer for the 2019 adaptation of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, said to be directed by Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer, and I just gave some general impressions. But now that the official trailer has been released, and the remake is slowly creeping its way toward an on-screen debut in April, I decided to take a more in-depth look at the official trailer, what we know about the remake so far, and the Pet Cemetery sequel. Personally, I don't think Pet Cemetery needs a remake. The acting and practical effects still hold up even today, and the film does deliver some genuinely frightening moments. I'm coming for you, Rachel. And this time, I'll get you. Okay. And I'll get you. All that aside, I am curious, albeit a tad ambivalent, just as I was with the IT remake, how and with what respect directors Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer are going to treat the source material for Pet Cemetery. So to answer those and other questions, let's take a look at the new official trailer, shall we? So the Creeds appear to be settled in their new main home and enjoying a family dinner. Lewis, however, looks perturbed. Perhaps he is worried about the repercussions of having buried the family pet, Winston Churchill, in the ground beyond, and trying to keep it a secret. This appears to be consistent, not only with what happens in the book, but in the original movie as well. So we see Rachel Creed, played by Amy Smeets, being very protective of Gage, as well she should be. And it is during these clips that not only do we spot the key characters, but we also catch glimpses of the Arinko trucks and a dark figure who may or may not be Victor Pascal, a ghostly figure from the original who was trying to help Lewis Creed because Lewis was helping him when his soul... Corporate. So most of the proper elements appear to be in place, but what's interesting about this is that the official trailer implies that both Rachel and Gage are able to see Victor Pascal, whereas they couldn't in the original. Longtime fans may have a difficult time responding to and accepting this major shift in the Pet Cemetery mythos. The only way I could see that working would be if the filmmakers employ the Beauty and the Beast cliché, fear the beast because of its outward appearance, until you discover what its true motives and intentions are. Even that is weak for a Stephen King movie. So I spoke about this briefly in my previous Pet Cemetery video. The ritual that these kids are performing. What I will say that I did not say previously is that the ritual seems to indicate we will learn more about the Micmac burial ground than we ever did before. However, I hope they don't divulge too much information because the mystery surrounding the burial ground in the original Pet Cemetery was what made it so frightening to begin with. So we get several shots of John Lithgow during the official trailer portraying Judd Crandall. In my previous Pet Cemetery video, I said that I was skeptical of John Lithgow as a casting choice. But given the range he has demonstrated in movies like Terms of Endearment and Harry and the Hendersons, he should be able to pull it off. But let's face it, John Lithgow will never be quite as good in the role as Fred Gwynn. It's just not going to be the same. John Lithgow doesn't quite have the classic drawl that Fred Gwynn had, 
which was what made the character of Judd Crandall so memorable. But I'm still willing to give him a shot. Now that I've reviewed the most important parts of the official trailer, I'm going to talk as well as speculate about the remake itself. From an aesthetic and visual art standpoint, I can see the remake being successful if the makeup artists and special effects coordinators manage to find just the right blend between practical effects and CGI. Then again, when has Hollywood ever gotten that right? From a directorial standpoint, what I really like about Pet Cemetery, directed by Mary Lambert in 1989, is that it had the look and feel of a scary story that could be told around a campfire. That classic style of directing was what made the original Pet Cemetery so captivating and so frightening. It is a style that is hardly seen anymore in 2019, but I'm hoping that directors Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Whitmire managed to at least come close to it. So the last thing I'll talk about in this video is Pet Cemetery 2. Released in 1992 and directed once again by Mary Lambert. A teenage boy and his father relocate to his late mother's hometown, and it is there that they discover the ground beyond the pet cemetery, which has the power to raise hell. That's exactly what this movie does. Rather than capturing the spirit of the original, this movie raises a spirit of its own. And that spirit stinks of the ground they buried it in. In fact, I think the first movie got buried in its own Micmac burial ground. And Pet Cemetery 2 was what it was resurrected as. Whatever they do with the remake, it has to be better than this. In fact, the movie was so bad that Stephen King himself insisted that his name be omitted from the credits. No fair. No fair, no fair. Sorry I had to end the video on such a sour note, but I had to rant about the sequel. I just couldn't help it. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It really means a lot to me. And for more great content on my channel, click the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn notifications on, and tell me in the comments how you feel about the official Pet Cemetery trailer, the prospect of a remake, and of course, the sequel. Thank you once again so much for watching, and I will see you next time.